Right. How do you feel about VSTs in today's production market as opposed to hardware and live instrumentation? It, it all works as far as when it comes down to um, arrangement, composition. It's about everybody has to have a musician's state of mind. Even the earliest DJs had to go into playing records with the mind of a musician before they orchestrated. So it's important to learn the technology. Because if you don't learn the technology, it, it has a chance to overwhelm you. So a musician's state of mind allows you to take all those tools and work it in your favor. Is that I don't think I don't think when you arrange sounds and compose sounds that one has a priority over another. But it all falls down to the composition. It also falls down to being very humble about all the tunes that you have and also the musicians before you can learn from. So I think um, when it falls down, you, like Ray Charles said, it all falls down to one track. <laughs> it comes you can you can mess with all the tracks, you got digital software, you got all the PSTs that you want, you got all the instrumentation that you want. It's still gonna boil down to your arrangement of sounds down to one track, um, as far as musically speaking. So I think it's just another tool. And, hey, you know what? An another comparison, I'll say one without getting long winded. Michael Jordan used the same basketball everybody else used. <laughs> you know, it's like, yo, we gotta get the old, gotta get the, the old ball. Stability with the ball, not, not the ball itself. That kind of leads me to my next question. How do you feel about production? Do you feel like it's advanced from the early 80s to now? You know what I mean? Do you feel it's more um, complex? What do you feel about the quality? Of the technology has advanced, and even the quality has advanced, but, but it doesn't mean that it, it, it is turning out better sonics and better records. You know, sometimes what you had in the 60s is the best period of musicianship because they all competed and played with each other at the same time. Out of that competition and love for musicianship, you had magic that you couldn't concoct or explain. That's why that period of time, the 60s and the 70s, between 65 and 75, you have the highest period of, of, of sample because that magic was just there in the recording. It was recorded at, at the highest quality. It was played at the highest quality. It was played together at the highest quality. Those three coming together created magic that, that you really can't kind of like verbalize a, a, a lot of times. So I think that um, when it comes down to it, production is just relative on the time period. Uh, I think a lot of the producers today in urban music, or black music, I should say, hip hop and rap, I think that experimentation is not, well, five years ago it was not warranted that somebody just experiment because if they experiment with a sound, then they out the door if it don't work. But now since the record business has dropped, I think the producers got nothing to lose. That means what? Coming up out of your beat per minute. If you between 92 beats per minute and 100 beats per minute, you ain't coming out of its own. You can live your production and burning people out just like everybody else. I mean, if you stay in the same zone, you know, that, you, what, they, what they do is like, they, they, they say almost like you're rectifying yourself. It's in the same tempo, doing the same thing. I don't care what you do sonically. If you don't change your tempos, you don't switch up on certain patterns, you don't let other instruments breathe, you're going to limit the art form. And then, you know, in hip hop, a lot of the art form is limited. Matter of fact, even when it comes down to the drum, other aspects of drum sounds aren't even played with a, a lot. So, um, in some ways it's better, in some ways it's tight. Do you feel that has anything to do with artists not listening to music outside of hip-hop and R&B? Yes. Uh, a lot of artists don't. They claim to feel that they won't work, that, that it won't work listening. They might, they might grow up and say, hey, you know what, I like this joint by Coldplay. I like this sound by Santana, but I don't know how to incorporate it. I don't know if I should take any chances. Major record companies corrupted the game by not allowing artists and producers to take chances. That's why the music was built on taking chances. The music was built by throwing a rock out there and not even knowing where it's going to land. So that was the beauty of the music. And so it's got to come from artists, it's got to come from producers. But I tell you this much, as I close out this, this, uh, this answer, the record business has created a zone where everybody's past their record selling people. But that doesn't mean great music is not happening. It's fantastic music that's out there happening. Now, will people go out there and buy it as opposed to buying a Wendy's burger? Actually, the music will be better than the Wendy's burger <laughs> for you. But people are now in a zone where they want to get music 
and they will support an artist, but they might not be supporting a file, an audio file, as much as they want to support an artist and an act. So they've got to gravitate to that. And so uh, I just like to see some of the artists, when they make their songs, be able to perform them well. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Thanks, man. One more question, man. I appreciate it. Let me wrap it up right here.